Thank you, friends, neighbors, and supporters for being here today. The leader and I just uh, came from an excellent discussion with a cross-section of Calgary women and have heard their reaction to the outstanding family-focused announcements of yesterday and today. The Conservative Party understands that families are struggling in Calgary. We understand the importance of ensuring we leave dollars in your pocket on to you to spend on your families the way you want to spend. We understand you're hurting because of lack of pipelines, tanker bans, and callous liberal attitude towards Western Canada. As your candidate, I'm committed to changing that. I also want to take a moment to thank the special guests who are here today. My candidate colleagues, Pat Kelly, Martin Shields, and Len Weber, and local, local elected representative Devinder Tour and Nicholas Milliken. But now I want to introduce the most special guest of the day our leader, the next Prime Minister of Canada, Andrew Scheer.
Thank you so much. Merci beaucoup. How's everyone doing this evening? I want to say a special thank you to all my colleagues in the House of Commons, all my colleagues who are offering for re-election and our candidates here in Calgary and across Alberta. I've got a piece of very good news to start off the evening. I know Alberta can use some good news. It's been a tough few years, but we are less than six weeks away from getting rid of Justin Trudeau's scandal play government. I have been able to visit Alberta a few times since this spring's provincial election. And I can tell you, as someone who has come from Saskatchewan, who knows what it's like to get rid of the NDP provincial government, things are already brighter in the province of Alberta. But unfortunately for the province of Alberta, this federal government has been following the very same playbook as the provincial NDP were running massive deficits which threaten social programs, raising taxes, and being embarrassed about our natural resource sector. I can tell you that Canadians and Albertans deserve a government and a prime minister that is proud of our oil and gas sector and will champion it all across the world. I am glad that we live in a country that celebrates the right to freedom of expression. And so I have no problem in principle with people who protest our oil and gas sector. I'm glad we live in a country where that's legal. But I'll tell you, nothing frustrates me more. Nothing makes less sense to me when I see people tying themselves to trees and laying down in front of bulldozers on the west coast of Canada to block exports of Canadian energy, but I don't see them lining up and down the St. Lawrence protesting tanker after tanker of foreign oil coming into our markets. And I'm here to tell you that as Prime Minister, I will be a champion for our resource sector. I will go around the world promoting it and talking about the benefits of having oil and gas extracted at the highest environmental standards where the revenues from that benefit every single province, every single region in this country. And that's why we are going to restore confidence in Canada's energy sector. That will revitalize Calgary, revitalize Alberta. It starts job number one. My colleagues in the House of Commons know this already, but Jag, you heard it here first if you haven't heard it already. Job number one for a Conservative government will be called an act to repeal the carbon tax. That's job number one. We're going to repeal Bill C-69, the No More Pipelines Bill. And we are going to start the process to get an energy corridor in this country so that Western Canadian energy can flow to Eastern Canadian markets so that once and for all we can get off foreign oil and become energy independent in this country. And this corridor energetic will give au Québec the capacity to partager sans energy hydroelectric with the other provinces. This is the type of nation-building project that will bring this country together so that Canadians in every region and every province can benefit from the bounty that has been bestowed on Alberta, Saskatchewan, and Western Canadian provinces. Now, I come from Saskatchewan, as you well know. Now, just out of cur Thank you. Thank you. Just out of curiosity, I like to do this as a little experiment in Alberta. How many people here are either from Saskatchewan originally or whose parents came from Saskatchewan? Fantastic, fantastic. So, you know, I know exactly the types of challenges that you're facing here. It used to be in Saskatchewan that for generations when the NDP were in power, young people had to come to Alberta f to find work and opportunity. And I know that that has been the case for many young people here in Alberta because of this federal government's attack on our natural resource sector. You know, it used to be that the private sector built pipelines in this country. Instead, under Justin Trudeau, he now has had to take $4.5 billion of your tax money and send it to American investors so they can build pipelines in other countries competing with our own oil and gas sector. Shameful, isn't that? 
That is a terrible indictment under, of the energy sector under Justin Trudeau's leadership. But all of that will change on October 21st because we are going to have a government on October 21st that puts Canadians first and is a champion for our energy sector and the thousands of women and men who work in it. That is the positive vision that I'm offering the people of this country. Now, in addition to that, we are running a campaign that is focused on making life more affordable for Canadians. On va réduire le coût de vie pour tous les Canadiens. On va rendre la vie plus abordable pour tous les Canadiens. We are going to make life more affordable for Canadians. We've already started unveiling innovative policies to put more money in the pockets of Canadians so that they can get ahead. I mentioned the carbon tax. We know now that the carbon tax is going to go up after the next election. We know that. The Parliamentary Budget Officer has shown that we're falling further and further away from our climate change targets with the carbon tax. Why would we continue to follow a policy that doesn't work? A Conservative plan is going to take real action to lower global emissions, take the climate, cha climate change fight global. We could shut everything down in our country, and in just a few days, China, Indonesia, and India would replace all those emissions. So our plan takes the climate change fight global. It also puts more money back in your pocket with a home renovation tax credit. And our plan for the environment goes beyond. It will once and for all, because it's 2019, put an end to the practice of dumping raw sewage into our rivers, lakes, and oceans. We are lowering taxes in many, many different ways. Just last week, I was excited to announce the public transit tax credit. Now, we heard initially that this made liberals very excited. They thought, you know, you're going to get a tax credit for taking the bus. But then it turns out the only reason why they were excited is because they thought that it made it easier to throw people under the bus, <laughs> not to actually take the bus. So we had to clarify that with them. Today, I announced that we're going to bring back the Children's Fitness and Arts Activities Tax Credit to make it more affordable to put your kids into different activities. And yesterday, I announced a universal tax cut, a tax cut for everyone, lowering the first income tax bracket to put more money in the pockets of every single hardworking Canadian family. So this election is coming down to that simple choice. Who do you trust to make life more affordable, put more money back in your pockets so you can get ahead? Sorry, who, what was that? Not Justin. Not Justin. How many here think that it's not Justin Trudeau who can do that? We know who gets ahead under Justin Trudeau's government, and it's not hardworking individuals. It's not small and medium-sized business owners. It's the corporate elite. It's the people who have high-priced government relations experts on speed dial who can get special access to the Prime Minister's office. He can't even tell the truth about his own interactions in the SNC-Lavalin affair. And now we know that he's blocking the RCMP's attempt to get to the bottom of that corruption scandal. So once again, once again, I will call on Justin Trudeau to do the right thing. Wave the cabinet confidences so the RCMP can do their job and get to the bottom of your corruption scandal. So that is the choice this election, where Justin Trudeau will talk down our energy sector and block important pipeline projects. Conservatives will restore investor confidence and get them built, putting people back to work all across this country. where he will abuse the power of his office to reward his friends and punish his enemies. I will restore ethics and integrity to government and shine a light on his corruption scandals. Where he will look our veterans in the eye and tell decorated war heroes that they are asking for more than he can give. I will honor their service to the country and ensure that they have adequate compensation for their service to this great nation. And where he will raise your taxes, run massive deficits, and impose greater amounts of debt on current and future generations of taxpayers, 
I will run a government that lives within its means so we can put more money back in your pocket because it's time for you to get ahead. That is our positive conservative message, ladies and gentlemen, and I cannot wait for October 21st. Thank you very much.